event ever. Uh, yesterday, I was like rambling with Terraform and GitHub, like user management, and I never did Terraform a lot. So I thought that uh, David like is way better than me, so I asked for help. And he said, OK, yeah, I can help you. And I, I propose to do it live because I presume there are more people that will you know, enjoy it looking at what we are trying to do. So yeah, I mean, how is it going so far, David? Uh, we are working together again after a few weeks of break. And how is it going so far? How is all this bare metal going? Yeah, it was just so sad when you left Influx that I just had to follow you to pack it. I was like, oh, I miss Gianluca. Uh, <laughs> no, things are going very well. This is day four. Uh, you know, it's still, getting accustomed, acclimatized, meeting people, saying hello, lots of introductions, like, hi, I'm David, hi, I'm David, all the time. But it, it's going very well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know that you was like, yeah, disappointed with saying, hello, David, I'm just all the time. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, the end it's, of... uh... No, I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, you, I saw yesterday that we, we work on the same team as well. So I think you you made a cool first project. So do you want to tell a little bit about that first, just to break through? Yeah, definitely. So it just as a way to kind of kick the tires on the packet platform and provision servers, like I'm very much in, in the same camp as you, I feel. And I don't like to click on GUIs. I don't want to do anything manually. I, I want everything to be very tightly automated and repeatable. So in order to do that, I was trying to think, OK, well, there's a packet API, there's a Terraform provider. But not only is there a Terraform provider, there's a Pulumi provider. And Pulumi is a project that I find really interesting because it's very much, it, it does the same job as Terraform, but allows you to use your own programming language rather than the HCL language from HashiCorp. So as my first project, I thought, let's use Pulumi and I'm going to use TypeScript because I actually quite enjoy that language. Uh, and I used it to spin up a, a few servers on the Packet API. And then I used the user data to provision a salt master and salt minions across the, the multiple bare metal servers uh, so that I can actually orchestrate provision and manage those servers with tools that I'm, I quite like using as well. And salt stack is my favorite configuration management tool because of a few different reasons. Um, it goes a little bit further in that you have complete access to the entire machine for the masters, which send messages over zero MQ to the minions, which is very cool. And it uses uh, an event-based system with zero MQ for allow automations to happen, which I think is very interesting as well. So you can actually set up beacons. It's the salt language is a beacon, which means when anything happens on this machine that we're listening or subscribing to, like an SSH login or someone running a bash command or a pseudo command or the CPU going above a certain threshold, we can actually have that run salt state automation on that machine without ever doing anything manually. So it was cool. That's, that's <laughs> nice. And I think something applies to what I'm trying, I was trying to do as well, because yeah, as you said, I like automation. I like to, um, avoid like boring tasks uh, and I'm lazy. So uh, we have a new, like we, we recently open source a project that's called Tinkerbell at Packet and it's a it's a, it, its own GitHub organization. And um, you know, you have repositories and teams and stuff like that. But ideally it would be great to have a place where um, we can control the, that part. So the GitHub management uh, has a code. And not only because like I'm lazy, but also because we can, you know, do code review or even even better, the contributor themselves can open up a request and do that by themselves. And we like the person that has uh, the right owners or the right permission can review and click merge. And ideally, like the CI will actually run the uh, process. So I think it's also good to enable communities or um, even inside a company to manage that part by, them, by themselves. And we will just have like the right people uh, helping with that. So that's it. I mean, let me, um, I'm going to share your screen, David, and we are going to place, I'm going to 
get started. So yeah, um, I tried to create this project at the beginning, and this is my first like Terraform project ever. So I read around and I saw that you can use modules as a way to encapsulate features. So I thought it was cool to uh, use like something that I can reuse over time because I like the idea to bring a consistent experience. So there are repositories and there are teams and teams owns a repository. Teams has permission. So ideally, my 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 idea was to have uh, to set up two teams for every like repository, and uh, you know having the the possibility to uh, to say okay, this is the for the repository A. I'm gonna have a team that is called uh, maintainers and one that's called admin. The admin for the it's called like repository name dash team uh, that dash admin and repository name dash uh, maintainers. So we will get those two, and obviously maintainer has maintainer permission, and, and sorry, yeah, and admin, admin permission on the repository itself. Uh, so the, in order to have this that consistency, I thought it was ideal to use like something like modules. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, this all this this all makes makes sense. I think I have a really good understanding of, of what you're trying to do, um, you know, democratizing the, the GitHub configuration, allowing it to be reusable. It all makes sense. I like it. That's great. So yeah, but I don't know what I'm doing. So I just, <laughs> I just hack that. I don't even know. I mean, I, I didn't know if it, I don't know if the model structure is right on how to, how it's supposed to be used. Yeah. I think you have to. Okay. So let's, that. yeah, let's start with that. Uh, so, I mean, there's nothing explicitly incorrect about using modules in this fashion. Um, it's not something I would particularly, I don't, I don't think it's something I would reach for right away in this scenario because um, while this code could be reusable, it's unlikely that someone would want to consume the modules in this way within a single provider. Um, I think where I see Terraform modules being used really effectively is when you have a grander configuration across the multiple providers, or even, I guess, multiple, loads of resources within a single provider. Um, like if I were going to spin up Kubernetes on AWS, then I may provide a module because many people would want to configure Kubernetes on AWS or Packet, GCP, you know, all of these different clouds. These kind of configurations make sense as modules. But I think when it comes to the provisioning of like a GitHub organization with some teams, uh, jumping straight into the module uh, usage, I, I think we'll try and avoid it initially. I think what we'll do here, as long as you're happy with the plan, is that we're just going to forget these directories exist for now. We'll focus on provisioning the organization and then we'll slowly start to talk about which parts of the, that configuration you kind of want to democratize to a, a pull request. And we'll just add that one by one as we go. Um, and I think what we'll do is I'll try and I'll try and do this in the same fashion that I would if I were just doing it on my own anyway. And is that, you know, leverage the examples from the documentation, show you how to look up these things by yourself, and then we'll try and bring in some of that really cool new syntax from 0 0.12 that allows us to re remove some of the verbosity of working with HTL in general. I think so, I'm all in. <laughs> you're all in. <laughs> OK, yeah. cool. So, Let's bring uh, me to the future. Yeah. OK, I will do my very best. So I'm just going to comment this out. We're going to start fresh. Mm -hmm. Now, we have this provider. And we are looking for two different bars. So we spoke briefly earlier. I believe this is going to be a GitHub token. And we're going to create an organization. So I don't believe we're going to need that set. I think you can use a, an old one that I don't use that much. It comes from my PHP journey. And it's called Penny PHP. Penny like that. And, uh, yeah. Can you just type it there so I can? Oh, yeah, it? I can. Yeah, because we share <laughs> that. So now I just need to figure out where you are. Oh, in the provider. Okay. Oh, provider. So here. here. And this is going to be the organization that we use as a green API. Okay. So let's just get this back here. Uh, 
All right, so I just leave that there for reference. Okay, I, I still believe this is optional from the provider point of view, but I may be incorrect. So we'll leave it in just now and we'll come back to that shortly. I still tend to see the variables. Okay, and that's just these two that we have here. Okay. Uh, okay. That's the way you had it, wasn't it? All right. Let's just try then. We want to create a new organization, right? Yeah, I mean, technically the organization is there. So, but yeah. Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is just kind of try and remove that from the provider and then we'll just spin up everything mm -hmm. as if it were new. And then we'll also walk through the process of importing an organization um, so that we understand how that works. And if I if it turns out I'm completely wrong and you cannot have a provider with that organization, then we will just reuse that organization and move on. I won't uh, waste too much time on that. But if we come down to these resource types, uh, the organization is part of the provider. There you go. I'm wrong already. <laughs> so, all right. So we're not going to start with creating an organization. We're going to create a repository. So when it comes to the automation of what we're doing here, you wanted to create a repository, you want some labels, and you want some teams with members. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah I'm just going to ask our audience if your audio is OK, because it, it's a bit like not great for me, but maybe it's my, my end. So let's see. We can be more than I, but we can go ahead in the meantime. OK. All right, let's do the repository first. So the, what's really great about working with Terraform is just the documentation is generally pretty awesome. The examples are always great. And then they always have this breakdown of each individual argument. And when that argument is also a type, they usually have those types broken down as well with their own kind of parameters. And then for some text is sitting at the bottom. So we'll just kind of try and walk through this repository uh, and piece together what we want to do. So. We'll start by copying this, and we'll give this a name. So we're using the Penny PHP organization. So we'll just make up a fake project, uh, and we'll call this a Symphony Web Bookings. Yeah, uh, David, I think Ed like wrote that is a bit scratchy. Do you know if you have some jacks that is not completely full in or whatever, or is your audio easy? And because uh, I don't know if. It's uh, sorry, you cut out on me there. Can you say that again? Yeah, no. Can you check if your audio jacks are all good? Because I, it's a bit scratchy, and I don't know if it. Uh, if you have a like, if, if you have a very easy audio setup, I think you can go with it. That's fine. <laughs> I'm just asking if you have some audio card or some jacks, or whatever that is making stuff more complicated. Uh, so. Uh, let's see if I can just check which microphone it's using. Uh, da, da, da. Ah. Hopefully that's better. It was using the wrong. Ah, uh, yeah, that's better. Uh. <laughs> okay, perfect. Sorry about that. Uh, it's a new Mac. I've, I've not really set it up yet. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I'm just going to assume that sounds better. And if anyone watching uh, says, if, if there's any issues, just let me know. OK, so we want to create a repository. So I just made up this name, Symphony Web Booking System. we we'll call this Symphony Web Booking System here. Now, these kind of, it seems like a bit of duplication, but really this, this is the name of the actual repository that's going to be created. And this is more of just a reference that is going to be used by Terraform to identify this resource. And we will give it a name. So I'm not very creative. So we're just going to use that. That's slightly nicer formatted. And we do not need this to be private. So we will call this false. 
and we're not going to use a template. Uh, this would be a good opportunity to kind of uh, make sure that we have everything configured correctly. Uh, and we can go ahead and try to run this. And to do that, See? what I'm going to do is just grab your penny PHP. Nice. Okay. And we will run a Terraform plan. And that should allow us to see that everything, oh, we got our first snag. Okay, so we don't have a value for that token. Uh, we did check that earlier. So I think the case does matter. Let me just. It is going to be like a, the secret part. So I'm going to remove your screen so you can check it without. Yeah. No, it's, it's OK. It's just, I think but... it's just a case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your screen is not shared anymore. So, and I'm going, uh, yeah, if, like David is just checking if my token is good. Uh, and I want <laughs> you to see if David is already too much for my token. So I'm going to remove it later. Uh, but yeah, I mean, one of the reasons about, I, I think every open source organization should use something like that. Kubernetes has its own like way. So they have a repository that is full of YAML. Um, but we are not married with YAML, so. And I also recently read that Terraform released some new feature that you can use to write like JavaScript and not the original language. That may be my future. As soon as I add go. But that's that, that's cool. I mean, I always dreamed about the idea to use a language to do. I even wrote blog post about it. I think my end dream would be using an actual client SDK. So for example, if you use AWS, you can use the AWS SDK with some magic, not like a means of abstraction. But in the meantime, I think it's better than that. So. All right, let's just. I can dance, I think. Sorry. I'm going to share my screen in the meantime and tell you a little bit about. Oh. Okay, we're good. So <laughs> oh, I don't need to share my screen. There you go. Got it. Okay. Bye. Yep. Yeah, so let's uh, just drop this in. Um, so if, if the people are any have any questions that are better than mine, just leave it back. Maybe uh, we will remove this variable. So we're not going to use this variable just now because it's part of the provider. So we don't need uh, to do that. We have penny PHP here, and we want to create our repository. So I'm now going to run our Terraform plan. And um, okay, so we just. Got a few things we can clean up with regards to syntax, which is cool. That's new in the 0 0.12 stuff, so I'll kind of cover that. Um, but what's really important here, and let me just pull this up a little bit. Oh, I see that we have. We actually have uh, an execution plan from Terraform that it says it wants to create this repository because we don't. it, it doesn't exist yet. And it shows all of the different parameters that we could override if we want. Um, and of course, the parameters that we did provide, such as you know, private being false. So let's pop this back down and talk about some of those warnings that we're getting. So as part of the as part of the latest version of Terraform, um, not everything has to be a string anymore. This was a, an old requirement. So you can see here that we have this kind of um, bash style interpolation syntax which is no longer required with Terraform 0 0.12. We can actually just use var.github token like so. And if we go to our variables here, um, these types also exist and do not long and no longer have to be string versions of it. That's one of the nice little tweaks that landed in the latest version. Less so that's your so let's remove those uh, linting errors, and we now just back to our Terraform execution plan. So assuming we're happy with that, then we can do a Terraform 
apply, and it will go away and execute that plan. And uh, we can see that we're happy for that to be created. And this will allow us just to check that everything is okay. Ta-da! Now, assuming we hit refresh here, we <laughs> have our wonderful new repository. Great. Okay. I mean, All yeah. Like I said, so, far. <laughs> so far, I'm very excited. I didn't have to touch the UI, so no colors involved, no pointing key. Only. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So and also, uh, like as as an exper as an experiment, I made somebody else you to do it, and I didn't have to do it. So that's great. So it means that you can like <laughs> technically somebody can like, you know help me and or help us in the interval line when we have to create a new repository or you know, even some more stuff like teams. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, right off the, off the bat there, you know, all I've done is create a repository. It's not particularly exciting yet. So what we're going to do is just pop over here to the Terraform documentation for this provider. Uh, and we'll just take a look at some of the resources that we, we have access to. And then we can talk about what you want next to happen in your automation. Now, we can see here that we have the ability to create uh, GitHub memberships. We also have the ability to create teams. Um, oh, we can create so, labels as well. Yes, and we have the ability to do the labels too. So. With labels, it's also something annoying that you have to do for all the repositories. But it sounds like a good way to formalize and say, those are my labels. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. OK, so do you want to create some labels first? Yeah, definitely. All right, because that will allow us to explore the wonderful new syntax that becomes available to us. So we'll do this the old way first. All right, so we paste an example. Um, what, what label would you like first, Um, I will do the kind bad, bad one, because I know it's cool. <laughs> yeah, the most important label, of course. Yeah. All right. So uh, we want resource dot GitHub repository, uh, and this is where I use. We got a question about like if we ever use the Terraform SDK. I didn't. Did you? Mm. No, I have not. No, sorry. Hmm. If you have a link, just share it there. So I. Uh, all right, let's just do this with this because I've used dashes, and I think this will get around it, and then we can uh, rename that resource in a moment. So. We have to tell which repository we want to create uh, the labels on. You've requested that we have a kind bug label. And because it's a bug, I'm assuming we're just going to be happy to have that a nice reddish yeah, color. That's great. <laughs> Red always means bad. So we're going to come back and run our reply. Undeclared resource. And okay, let's just fix that dash and underscore thing. That's just a nasty habit of mine that I really need to get out of the way of doing. So let's use this. Now, what's going to happen here is I'm going to break everything, I believe. Let's check. Yep. So because I've changed the resource identifier, and now he wants to destroy the repository in order to create the repository again. Oh. <laughs> um, so ch changing the resource identifier is not something that you want to get in the habit of. Uh, but because we haven't really done much so far, oh, we're just David, I have to stop. David, I have to stop it again because I think your microphone is having trouble again, but in a different way because I heard a different sound. It's very far. Uh, okay. Uh, 
<laughs> like kind of vibes. It looks like a yeah. There's a vibration. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that would be. Um, okay. <laughs> that's an okay to just mad. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's very hard to get at least for my side. From the chat, they they also have issues. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what you do. I mean, let's go in this way and see how it goes. If it's <laughs> unheardable, I'm going to and try it. Let me just, I'll check my connections, okay. Hopefully it's all right. That is good. Way better than my... Oh, no, no, there we go. Okay, so... Uh, all right, let's just keep going for now. Um, if we need, uh, I have a reboot, stretch machine. I can always jump back to my setup. So. Yeah, can, can you try to get back to the, the Mac one? Because this one is very hard. Sure, sure. Okay, so you want me to use the Mac one? Like that? That that's better. It's better. Well, okay. <laughs> it's this. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's just keep going for now. Uh, if there continues to be problems, we'll try and sort something out. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just going to accept accept this deletion, and I'm going to allow it to recreate it. Just because we haven't really got anywhere yet, it's not a big deal. Oh. Uh, so the access token that we have doesn't have the ability to delete the repository. Oh, let me fix that. Um, okay. okay. Oh yeah. Update. So we're, you're good. <laughs> yes. Okay. So destroy, 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 and spin back up. All right. So let's uh, uncomment this. We can use this syntax again because I will. Use valid syntax. And uh, we will try to run a plan and make sure that I've not messed anything up. Oh. Uh, what have I done wrong? So you're trying to use the new syntax. Yeah. So I have an inappropriate value for attribute repository string required. Uh, oh, okay. So if we go back to the documentation and we take a look at the repository, it has, uh, exported things here. Now what we actually want is, I'm assuming the full name. And if I get this wrong, we will quickly check the example. Okay, that looks much better. Okay. So when we're referencing the other resources inside of another resource, you have to put the resource type, the identifier within the Terraform system, and then you have to access one of the exported attributes from the resource, which is just this attribute reference at the bottom. So when we want to understand or what reference that we can use any of these different things here, or we could expose them as outputs, etc. So what we're saying is we want to create this issue label and we want it to happen on this repository and we specify a name and a color. Uh, okay, so we're happy with the plan and we're going to apply. We will say yes, I should hope I just Uh, so is this maybe another permissions thing? Does our token have the ability to manage the labels? Hmm. 
I'm gonna. There is no reference with label. <laughs> and you, the token has record. Uh, maybe I'm just using the wrong thing here. Can you just, yeah. yeah, or you can try now and see I gave you more. But there is nothing. Okay, so it wants the short name of the repository. It doesn't want the full name. Let's just try name and hit apply and go. Nicer. Uh -huh. Okay. So we come along to here and we click on our repository. See, and that color is red. So that's perfect. Do you see the labels? <laughs> Oh, uh, you have okay, to so, to request and as you can see, like the UI. Okay, so I don't have access to issues here, so we're going to turn that on. So if I come over here, uh, we have has issues. So we can modify the state now of this repository. So it has issues, and we turn that on. And let's run a plan. And it's telling us that it wants to change this one attribute of the repository. So the fact that we we didn't change the identifier, so it, it knows that it's already created. Exactly. And now, if I refresh right here, back. we should see the issues tab. Sure. Which means I now have access to labels. And we have our kind bug. She's good. <laughs> and can we can we add that to some other like repositories that are already there? Just to for consistency and say so there is like a any repository that we can add we can use the test. Uh, can you so you want to reuse the GitHub issue labels to apply them to multiple repositories, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we can use some of the Terraform syntax that, that, that just says that we can create that for all of the repositories that we care about. Yeah, we could do something like that. Um, let's let's go down the path first of adding a, a second label. Yeah. Now, normally, what we do is we repeat these resource blocks like that, but it gets a bit uh, a bit cumbersome and there's just a lot of repetition, which allows us to use one of the new features in 0 0.12. Uh, and this is something that I did on the Helm charts repository and Flux Data. And I actually made this Terraform public as well. So the, the idea being that anyone could come along and make a suggestion that we should have different colored labels or are there different label types depending on whatever i don't know it was, yeah i mean uh, I, yeah i like that i i was, yeah i didn't think about the, the possibility to play the terraform code inside of that's also yeah idea. you can you can allow anyone to come along and suggest changes and as long as their pull request explains why that change should happen then there's no reason that that has to be controlled by any sort of admins or anything like that like just you know democ democratize the entire repository so, you know that's what open source is about so we can take this syntax like this, and we can see that it's just almost the same, only we have this new for each syntax, which was introduced in 0 0.12, which allows us to look over this resource for multiple variations. And that just means that we could have our bug and our feature here. And uh, we'll just remove this. And we call it kind. So we'll call this types kind. 
and this resource identifier will change a little bit. So we want our uh, symphony with booking system dot name. Uh, I parameterized the colors, but we're not fussed about that just now. So um, let's just do all red for now. Because I don't think the colors yeah. are particularly interesting. <laughs> so what we have here is that we can define all the types that we want. So we have bug, we have feature, we could have a chore. This is a chore, not a very great description, but it will work. And we'll just add one more, which could be uh... <laughs> maze going blank. Uh... Refactor, there we go. Refactor. Yeah, it is always forward. in. More docs, exactly. All right, OK. So you can see that we now have this really uh, kind of nice, easy way to add arbitrary uh, resource, uh, re uh, labels to our repository. So if we come along here, and we'll just run our plan again, and we'll get an idea of what changes are going to happen. And we can see that we want to add five new labels and destroy one. And that makes sense. Like we removed the previously kind of all hard coded label, and now we've used this templating system. Uh, and we can apply that over the top and say yes. And we'll give that a few seconds. Yep. We pop along here, and we'll hit refresh, and we have all of our kinds there. We have a really nice automated, uh, pull requestable way of modifying the labels on the report. Yeah, with way less boilerplate. So Exactly. I mean, if you could imagine the old code that we had, you know, which was pretty much just the example issue. So if we come and if we just copy that again, like, you know, well, this is okay on its own. When you add <laughs> five of them, yeah. Yeah, it just gets a little bit unruly. So I've been able to provide a nice, simple way of doing that. And it's one of my favorite features with Terraform 0 0.12 is, is the ability to use these iteration concepts or constructs. Um, to really and simply this is this modify. is something you can apply to all the 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 rest the rest potentially. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, what would you like to add next? Do you want to have a shot? So, will we have Gianluca at uh, GitHub Team? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, what's the info? So well, if you go to the documentation. We'll so we'll start with the example and we'll, we'll build it out and we'll take it from there. Okay, let me let me see what I can do. Um, not sure about now I, I feel powerful. So <laughs> now I have to figure out. Okay. So I can go and open the Git uh, platform. Yeah, I can just paste in the example if you want, and you can make the changes. Oh, yeah. Let's see if you're grabbing that, opening that tab. It's going to be way up. OK, that's it. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to get, um, oh, this is the identifier. So I'm gonna We're gonna get. We're gonna use. I think I would like to use the, the name of the repository right, as a uh, as a prefix. Uh, but the team wouldn't be unique to the repository. The team would be for the organization. Oh, okay. So I think maintainers would make sense, and then well, in fact, what we can do is. You know, let's start by creating the docs team. Right? Okay. We'll have docs. So let's let's do docs first. And then we'll we'll add on a couple more teams and we'll change the syntax to be the, the nice chaining method. 
that's it. I think it's the great description. And yeah, I presume. Oh, and I have to it. No, And at this point, I can do plan. And I see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we come here. over here, uh, I don't think I'll be able to see it. Um, well, I, I, yeah, the, the screen that uh, is going is my screen, so I think they have to look at it. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> if, I, if I manage to get it right, but who knows? Let me see. Yeah. Um, so if I go on Teams, we have a Docs team. So, and if cool. I want to add you as a, as a member of the Docs team, uh huh. Yep. So now you want to copy the example for GitHub team membership, and then I, I have it in front of me, so I can I can take. It. Oh, okay. Oh, but and so that's organization right. membership. Yeah. So you want to do a GitHub team membership resource. Oh, uh, I. Let me scroll. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, not wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> So scroll down to GitHub team, and then underneath team, there is a team membership. Yep. OK. OK, but I have to do both. I have to use the GitHub membership to add you, add you as a team. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure. I can't remember how GitHub works. I don't know if the membership is needed. Let's just try the team membership. And then if that doesn't work, we'll do the org membership as well. OK. So uh, here I have to use the team. I don't need this anymore. You do team. not. Know. Docs. And that's it. Perfect. Let's uh, run the, the plan and, and see what happens. Yes, nice. we're having you as a team member. Yeah. I'm going to apply and we're going to see if we need a membership. You're gonna get a new organization today. Oh, hey, <laughs> that's it. So if I get back, the any, I should be. Oh, I'll oh have one to pending. That that's you. You're in pending. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Uh, I just good. got the email. Okay. All right. So let's now uh, try and make this. Um, Bit nicer because let's assume we have multiple teams. So let's modify yeah, the gonna... GitHub teams first. Yeah, you you have your screen already again. So on you and yeah, I mean I think you briefly told me that like models shouldn't. I mean we can avoid models, and I'm happy to do it if if, if we can still reduce part of the code. Because let's say like I want let's say like I have some like requirements like I. I would like to have two teams for every repository, name has repository name and admins, dash, dash, dash admin and dash members, because I want to have an admin that can, teams that can do like settings changes and so on, or whatever, I don't know, and one that is like only the maintainer. So ideally it would be, it would be nice to, to say, okay, this is what like, I have a piece of I have a resource that does all those stuff for me. I just have to specify like, the, uh, the name of the repository. 
and maybe the list of admin. Sorry, your audio is kind of cutting in and out. So I think I missed. Oh, sorry. Out. Yeah, let's let's say that I like I I want to pack a bunch of resources together, and those will be will sound like create a repository and create two teams that are called like uh, repository name dash admin and repository name dash maintainers uh, with their own members. But I want that to be like enforced in code or enforced in some way. In this way, I will know that all the repositories has a yeah or me. Like a, a consistent feeling. Just check it. Yes. Sorry, I mean, yeah. oh, are you still there? <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. It, it, sorry, your your audio is just being a bit choppy there. I'm not sure what's happening. Okay, so yeah, probably. I think I, got some of, <laughs> I think I got some. I think I got some. Okay, so yeah. I I believe what you were what you're saying there now is that um, let's ignore the the team and the membership stuff right now. I think what I heard there was you want to be able to then apply these labels to multiple repositories and kind of enforce that through the automation. Yeah. In which case, I think let, let's let, let's tr use the module approach for that then. Um, and then we can uh, utilize that module for each of the repositories that we want to apply it to. So uh, let's see. Um, you've got members here. Let's just copy this. So we'll call this uh, repo labels. Name.tf. And we'll copy our label code from here. Because we're happy with this code. Uh, I could just do that. Okay. Uh, and we want to parameterize this bit here, uh, which means this becomes bar repository. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Which means here we actually want to be able to use a module label labels. And uh, I can't remember this syntax. Let's just pull that up. Modules. Maybe I should have commented it out earlier. Uh, da -da -da. Local paths. And So repo labels uh, modules repo labels. And this expects a parameter. Um, I think the syntax for that is vars equals repository equals. Uh, we want to provide, we want to do this for each of the repositories that we are going to create. So for now, let's just. Yeah, try. I think that we can list the name. We can list the name there. Yeah, we can just do, let's do this first and make sure nothing has broken. Yeah. Now we have changed all of the identifiers because they're going through a label now. We may see that this does a mass delete and a mass recreation. Um, but we'll just see what happens. And I'm, I don't even remember if this bar syntax is right. And we'll look it up if we need to. Yeah. Uh, module not installed. What did I get wrong?
I know that they're getting stolen when they do terraforming. Terraform. Okay, better. All right. So now it's complaining about my bar syntax, uh, which I'm not surprised at. Let's see if we've got an example in here. Computer says no. Uh, Terraform and out Google module here. Maybe it's just uh, okay. Let's see. Maybe I was overcomplicating it. No, that's an argument. Oh wait, is it because I haven't defined the variable yeah. <laughs> repository uh, type string? There we go. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to do a. Exactly. Yeah. All the IDs have changed because we've changed the composition of this Terraform plan. It now lives inside of a module. Yeah, but what we should get is just the exact same. We'll end up in the same state eventually. So let's try applying this. And then we will go back to here. And because we kind of hard coded this for a single repository. So what we actually want to try and do is see if we can use the same for each syntax uh, to make this available uh, across multiple repositories. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah? Let's see what you describe, so. Yeah, let's just make it up as we go along. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> All right, so we want a for each. Uh, we're going to have a repository equals Symphony Web Booking System, uh, which means this changes. To be, uh, see if I can remember what that is. I should have deleted my example code so quickly. Each dot key or each dot value. There we go. Each dot value. I'm not sure what I keep doing to change file. Okay. Um, So let's give that a Symphony Web Booking System key. Uh, and let's just see if that breaks anything. Uh, so maybe we cannot use the for each syntax inside of the module. Hmm. That, that's unfortunate. What What if we pass, a, can we pass a list of strings to the module and do the for each? Yeah, for sure. So what we're saying is we want an array type. So let's call this. Uh, oh, but now we have two. Yeah, then we have the nested for each because we'd be doing the label creation. Uh, so let's take a look. I'm not, we're now getting into parts of it that I'm a little bit unsure of. But fortunately, there's a really good repository on GitHub right. which has examples of some of the new syntax. So why don't we see if there's something here that actually allows us to uh, do what we want to do? So this is the for each syntax that we've been using so far. 
which I think we're kind of hitting the limit of now, at least I believe so. So what about if we take a look at the four expressions and see if that maybe gives us something that is slightly um, more flexible with regards to what we're trying to do. Let's see. So it seems that we can actually do kind of an imperative for style loop. I wonder if that can only exist inside of a, a resource or if that could be outside and actually allow us to template a resource. I'm not entirely sure. Let's see. Oh, we've got docs, even better. Yeah, because ideally a workaround would be to remove one of the operations. So for example, we would create all all the labels as a resource by the, their own and to for each the list of one. Okay, let's just experiment. Yeah. <laughs> What if, let's grab this example here. I want to see if we could, um, before in, in this hard code, A and B. Uh, and I'm curious if this could be an actual resource definition. Though, based on that syntax, I'm going to assume that's more than likely going to yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, usually the point when I, start, that when I start rambling about, we need a language. Well, yeah, I mean, if we were to do this <laughs> in our... Uh, and a real programming language, then of course, like that would have taken us five seconds and would not have been that interesting, probably, to stream. Uh, uh, it won't be great. Yeah, so uh, I have no idea. I'm just going to type say ABC uh, labels, close this off, and Oh, that's not going to work. This is GitHub. I'm a hundred percent sure this is going to yell at me, but uh, so that would be S. Oh, stop doing that. I'm not getting used to this Mac trackpad yet. Okay, so we want key uh, repository. Uh, so yeah, we are, we're gonna. Yeah, we're... Some, there is like stir lap from in the chat that says that four is usually for map and list, but we're gonna fight, fight again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's saying that an argument or block definition is required. Yeah, so I, I think it's only going to work inside of the resource. So, uh, yeah, we're not going to be able to make that work the way we were hoping, which is a shame. We have yeah i mean ideally ideally we can like list all the all the like labels one by one and add a for each on the one and that will make that like not that fun but working yeah. Um, yeah, for sure so if we go back to this syntax here and um, but then we, we wouldn't need a module for that we could we could have done that in the main file but... yeah so we, yeah, we, we, don't need a, we need a model if you think, I mean, in my mind, I have this like model with the list of labels that I can like move around and assign to all the Yeah. I, I think I, I, that would make me happier. <laughs> yes, me too. All right, so I am a feature, I am a feature. 
Okay, yeah, so what we could do now is we could accept uh, an array. It's a list array. I'm not sure what they call it. Um, of repositories and then inside each of these we could do a for each over that bar um, which would allow us to have a, the, the labels all created. I feel like we're, we're kind of hitting a compromise now where I'm getting a bit unhappy with the code. I'm assuming you <laughs> maybe feel the same and that we just don't want that much duplication of what we're doing. I, I really I really like this approach. Mm. It's just a shame that uh, I don't think we can do it. No, I can't think of a way to do it. Because yeah. what I mean, what's quite nice about Terraform zero point twelve is that this for each does take arbitrary kind of types we can actually pass in an array of objects and we have access to that object within the for each but then i'm still not sure how we would handle um, the multiple repository yeah i'm not sure how to do that uh. I don't know. I mean, we we import the mo we import the mothers multiple multiple times. So it won't be a list of repositories. Yeah. yeah, we could import the module multiple times and do it for each re rep repository. It's a shame we can't use the for each in the module itself. Yeah, uh, I wonder if there's anything else here. I mean, uh, I don't think anything there would be particularly useful here. Let's see what advanced dynamic blocks are. Oh, Sir Lettron says that we can with Terraform 113. We can use for each oh. with modules. Sir ah, so it's just a version thing. Oh, nice. So what someone in the chat is saying then is if we revert this, that approach this comes back to a string um and then we can this would work right that's what they're saying uh yeah he he just say they just say yeah you can <laughs> one zero so i don't know what what we can but yeah we can something we can do something yeah. will we try I and upgrade think... your terraform <laughs> yeah, let me see. I'm going to. I think. Let me see if. Oh, you're on next shell. Got it. Okay. Let's see if it next shell has. Twelve twenty four. So how do I? I don't know. Let's go out. Oops. I can type the T. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I thought all oh, my keyboard is broken. No. Um, I'm wondering how I can update to one. But I'm going to figure it out. Um, Um, computer is hard. Yeah, upgrade. Yeah, I think I, I'm. I will gonna. I will do a stream about Nix as soon as I can learn it. Because I tried. I'm trying to learn it. I picked up a few days ago, but I'm not that far. Meantime, use the rest. Why? How did I? Uh, how did you install it? <laughs> Maybe for a go. Mm. Did you go install Terraform, perhaps? Mm. 
I don't know. I think we're gonna trust <laughs> the. Yeah, trust the chat. Like the for each in a module works as long as you're using zero thirteen. We promise. You don't have to yeah. look at it. It's okay. In the meantime, I will figure out. Yeah, anyway. So is, um, yeah, is there anything else you want to add to this? I think I'm very, you told me that we can avoid, um, we can avoid modules and use like multiple files. How do you usually decide how, how to structure? Yeah, so something that Terraform does by default is um, it, it loads any file that is .tf in the current directory. So you can split your things up um, depending on whatever you know route you prefer. You know, some people prefer to group by type, where you'll see like a variables .tf. Uh, I like to kind of group by function instead. So it's likely that I would. You know, maybe have a, a bug.tf that created labels and colors for identifying bugs or templates um, for issues, etc., and kind of group by that. So if we say that we want, uh, although we're using the, the looping for each syntax here. So let's just do a, a kind of fake file. Let's do uh, issues.tf and move that to here. Uh, and you can literally just yank this straight out and it'll still work just because it loads everything in the files. So, uh, so it, I mean, Terraform, yeah, it's quite flexible. It, it doesn't mind. Well, that's because I've got that for each in there. So let's just take that out. Uh, what was it? GitHub repository dot symphony web name. And there should be no changes, you know, so you can kind of slice and dice and, and move all of those uh, declarations across whatever files based on whatever strategy you wish to adopt. And it, it works just fine. Okay, yeah, I think I got a great overview and I think I, oh, let me tell you, like, how do you do delivery in the, with that? I mean, with the influx repository that you created, do you use action, yeah. do you do it manually, do you do it with now, or do you? So on the influx Helm charts, we're using GitHub Actions. So we have a couple of different options, you know, we, we did a plan first. So we're just using the YAML syntax with GitHub Actions. Um, for doing the plan, we're basically saying that, you know, if we get a pull request that is targeting the master, then we want to be able to use the HashiCorp Terraform Actions, and we just specify the version and the subcommand that we want to run. So these are, are, are quite easy to do. And in fact, I'm pretty sure, uh, let's do the apply. Um, because we're not going to send a pull request. So let's just jump straight into that and trust the system. Uh, so what we want here is a dot GitHub. And then we want workflows. And we will call this uh, master.yaml uh, because of the master branch. And uh, okay, so the, let me see if I have a call how this syntax all works. What we're saying is anything, if the workflow itself changes, so if this file changes, we want to run the plan. If any file changes, we want to run the plan. <laughs> now that's made, that syntax made sense in the Helm charts one because I keep the Terraform code in its own subdirectory away from the actual main repository. But because we don't have that uh, delineation here, and we'll just remove this completely. So, um, but we, in uh, fact, I'll comment. Uh, so, so the example is still there. So, if we're using the path specifier, we're saying if the plan changes or the fails, like say we use a, yeah, let's do that. That should work. So, if any Terraform fail changes on the master branch, then we're going to execute this job. 
what this job is doing is clearing out the source repository, pretty standard GitHub action stuff there. Uh, we're going to do a Terraform format. Um, so that just tells us if the code isn't formatted to Terraform's happy thing, just like go format. I believe the GitHub token does exist in the repository. I think we did that before we started streaming. We can run oh, it by the way, to initialize. Uh, I, I placed a binary in that in that directory with Terraform 013. Uh, All right. So <laughs> if we want to really change ourselves and call it done for today, we can uh, do that. There are so many stuff shared that I'm confused and I confuse myself. <laughs> Is this terminal shared? Is this Uh Okay, so the it's, this will run run Terraform and it will then validate it and then it will apply it. Uh, now I use uh, GCS Google Cloud Storage for storing state. We're not going to have access to that here, so let's just remove that, uh, and everything else should uh, just work as expected. Um, I mean, this is going to be entirely, well, it's not going to be useless because it will execute the plan, um, but it will fail because we don't have that state file that was just nuked there uh, available in the CI runner. So we can push this if you want. It will fail, but at least we can see it fail if you want. Um, I'll leave that up to you. You can decide. Yeah, I think I'm not ready. Maybe I can. In the meantime, if you want to check the modules with the one thirteen, with the zero thirteen version, I can set up the rest. Oh wow! How did that happen? Okay, so you've got one thir Oh no! Wait, that's what you downloaded in the directory, and then you just deleted it, right? Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> So that's, that's gone there, right? Yeah, okay, all right. All right, anything else, Jandika? I think I'm good. I learned now. <laughs> I think okay. I, will, I will ask you for a review for my next, like, fully complete, like, attempt GitHub management with uh, Terraform, but I'm happy with what I saw. So thank you for, like, quickly boosting my learning great yeah no problem and if you want to write it all in go as much because i know you love writing in go then you should take a look at, at pulumi too maybe we could do another session on that another time yeah i think so we schedule it like with a, like a bunch of days of uh, a bunch of days earlier than what we did yesterday uh or maybe not because that's how how it works we just do everything at the last minute and if it works it works if it doesn't just been a ramble. Okay. So thank you for your time. It was great. See you in the other like in some Zoom or some other place because we can move and stuff. How how are you right, how well. are you doing for you without any conference? Because you used to travel a lot. Yeah, I did forty two events in twenty nineteen and I've done three events in twenty twenty. So it's a massive change. Which is good. I mean, I get to spend time at home with my family. I've been, you know, gutting out my office a bit, kind of redecorating all that stuff that I thought, oh, I'll do eventually. I've, I've had the time to kind of do that this year. I mean, other than, you know, obviously there's a lot of negative circumstances in the world that have led to that, but, you know, silver lining is very really happy all around, for sure. We have, yeah, <laughs> we have to do our best, you know, to the, at the good part, but yeah, definitely, like, excited to see that good man. Uh, yeah, I mean, thank you for for coming and for accepting my my crazy idea to do it live. And yeah, see you soon. All right, thank you very much.